Hey, Nico. Oh, hi. I didn't expect you back so soon. Do you want to look after the gem? No, Josh. I'd be too tempted to sell it. I'll see you again soon. Okay. It was Rosso's sidekick, Sergeant Moon. Excuse me. Ah, Monsieur Stobart, n'est-ce pas? That's correct. You remember me. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime is fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, yeah, sure. Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Montmartre. I heard he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic in the Avenue des Hérissons. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. I'd like to report an assault. Yes, monsieur? Where is the victim? I'm the victim. I've been harassed by a pair of thugs. I see. And where did this alleged assault take place? Outside the Hotel Ubu. They stopped me as I was leaving and went through my pockets. Could you describe the suspects, monsieur? One looked like a gorilla, and the other looked like a weasel. Their names are Flap and Guido. Boom! <laughs> I'll get them this time. What are you going to do about Flap and Guido, Sergeant? I'm going to bust them, monsieur. For years I have been hoping to pin something on that pair. Now's my chance. I'll show them, and the inspector. Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks for taking me seriously. I'm only doing my duty, monsieur. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty-looking guy with a scar on his left cheek. No, monsieur. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. I believe Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantau. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. I found this red nose in the sewer. What were you doing down there? Fishing for clues. That's where the clown went. You still insist you saw a clown, monsieur? Of course. And this novelty nose proves it. It will take more than a plastic proboscis to convince Inspector Rousseau. You don't want this as evidence, then? Certainly not, monsieur. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. The clown. This man looks nothing like a clown. He's taken off his grease paint and costume. Then there is nothing to link this man with the killing. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. Hmm. Maybe not. Does the name Merlin mean anything to you, Sergeant? Nothing, monsieur. What do you suppose this tool is used for, Sergeant Moo? It looks like something an obstetrician would use, monsieur. It was with tools like this that the clown made his escape. I don't understand. He opened up the hole and disappeared into the bowels of the earth. If you say so, monsieur. Does this matchbook mean anything to you, Sergeant? That's a double-line Swedish with a crosshatch Bergman strike strip. 
Now, that's unusual. Pre-war Anderson hinging. Really? I haven't seen a reinforced Anderson outside of a private collection. It's rare, then? In this part of the world, yes. There are only three places these are made. Taiwan, Manila, and Slough. Hmm, maybe not. Would you like to shake my hand, Sergeant? Not while I'm on duty, Monsieur. The gesture could be misconstrued. Do you recognize this dirty tissue? No, Monsieur, I do not. I found it in the sewer. Perhaps it would be better if you put it back there. No way! This could be an important clue. If you say so, Monsieur. Is Rosso here? Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? Yes, I do. One moment, Monsieur. Stobart is here to see you, Monsieur. Did he say what it was about? No, Monsieur. Very well. Hi, Inspector. Remember me? But of course, Mr. Stobard. My mind is a well-ordered faculty. A mental classification system that's the envy of the Bibliothèque Nationale. No tricks, mark you, monsieur. Just exercise. Just as our muscles waste through inactivity, so our minds decay. But there is no need. If only people would learn to exercise their wits daily. If he was trying to impress me, it worked. He was pompous and patronizing, but he had style. Eh bien, if you called about the bombing, you're too late. Investigations have been closed, but have been taken off the case. What about the murderer, the dead guy? It is out of my hands. Ever heard of a guy called Marquet? Jacques Marquet? Marquet? I know the name well. He has a record for suspected blackmail, kidnapping, arson, and art theft. An all-rounder, huh? How come he's on the loose? His bravado is matched only by the courtroom skills of his attorney. Have you heard of Professor Pegram, the archaeologist? Molly Pegram? The second son of Lord Barclay Pegram? Well, I don't know. I only read about him in a magazine. So much for the efficacy of rehabilitation. What has he done this time? He made an important archaeological find in Ireland. Do you know Pegram well? I have connections with the family, but I wouldn't say I knew him at all. Is his name really Molly? Of course not. That was the nickname he was given at school. All his friends and acquaintances know him as Molly. Don't you want to know what I found out about the killer? I told you, monsieur, the case is closed. I have washed my hands of the whole affair. Then I'll have to continue my investigations without your help. No. You must forget the business of the clown completely. Go back to being an ordinary tourist, Stobard. Do you know a pair of thugs called Flap and Guido? I have known those two since they graduated from special school. Flap is a nasty piece of work. But Guido is the real brains of the partnership. Where did you hear of them? I met them out front of the Hotel Ubu. Did you find out the ID of the guy who was killed in the explosion? I already knew who he was. I heard that the bomb victim's name was Plantow. Your sources are reliable. He was a big shot at the Treasury, wasn't he? Maybe that's why you've been taken off the case. I'm sorry, monsieur. I cannot comment. What was that psycho-detective business you did in the cafe? It is my theory that the passions evoked in violent crimes create ripples in the ether, invisible to all but the possessor of a highly developed and receptive mind. I'm impressed. Can you bend spoons, too? I didn't think a man of your obvious intelligence would stoop to mockery. I'm not mocking. I've had personal experience of the power of the mind. I used to get ignored at parties, until I read a book that changed my life. Really? What was it called? Hypnotism for fun and profit. He looked at me as if I'd farted at a funeral. The power of mesmerism is a rare gift, not a party trick.
You're not going to try any of that psychic interrogation on me, are you? Do you find the thought of my probing distasteful? Let's just say I'd rather you didn't. I've got more doubts than doubting Thomas when it comes to mysticism. Too bad. I think you would make an interesting subject under controlled regression. The day I let anyone mess with my mind hasn't dawned yet. Does this red nose mean anything to you? I'd imagine it means you have not given up your pursuit of the clown. You're absolutely right. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No. It's the face of a killer. The man who bombed the cafe? The photograph was taken soon after the explosion. He'd escaped through the sewers, leaving a trail of clues behind him. Circumstantial evidence, Stobard. None of it proves a thing. What do you make of this, Inspector? Astounding. Where did you come by a stone like that? I was given it by a man in a bar in Ireland. Do you recognize the gem? It is unfamiliar to me. If such a jewel had been stolen, I would know it for sure. Does the name Thomas Merlin mean anything to you? No, monsieur, nothing. It's another one of the assumed names used by the killer. Ah, the famous killer clown case. Yeah, you might have forgotten all about it, but I still aim to find that guy. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? No, monsieur. I suggest you ask Sergeant Moo about that. God only knows why, but he collects matchbooks. He claims it is a hobby. What do you make of this white powder, Rosso? It is plaster. Say, you're good. Would you care to shake my hand, Inspector? Please don't be offended if I decline your offer, Stobard. The palms of my hands are particularly sensitive. I found this tissue in the sewer. It would have been best if you'd left it there. So long, Inspector. sign of the crew of the ambulance. I felt a little guilty as I tried the door, like I was about to rob a grave. I gripped the handle with an involuntary tremble in my hand and pulled. The door was locked. The door The woman managed to look overworked and hassled, though she didn't appear to be doing anything. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plant. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? Has Marquet been visited by a man in a clown costume? Oh, no. You haven't seen a man in disguise? Well, there's Theodore the Bear. He comes every Thursday to entertain the children. Personally, I think he scares them half to death in that crummy old bear suit. If I was stuck on my back with tubes in every orifice, he's the last person I'd want to see. Has Marquet had a visit from a pair of gangsters? I should hope not. Can you describe them? A thin guy who looks like a weasel and his friend, the gorilla. Sounds as if they escaped from a zoo. 
I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? No, I'm conducting a private investigation. Then I can't help you. So, do I get to see Marquet before the funeral? That attitude will get you nowhere. My instructions were quite clear. No one gets to see Marquet. So, unless you can prove you're a relative or a close acquaintance, you're wasting your time here. What does this false nose remind you of? Oh, it's a clown's nose. That's right. Why don't you give me a break and go and play with someone else? Have you seen this man here at the clinic? No, sir. And I never forget a face. What does this gem suggest to you? I advise you not to flash that around. The hospital insurance wouldn't cover it if it was stolen. Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet has been asking for you. For me? Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Now, let me see. He was on Ward B-12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh dear, he's on Ward J-2. That's... Nurse Grendel's Ward. What does this tool suggest to you? Is it a crack detector? Huh? Polar explorers use them to poke about in the snow. Ah, uh, uh, no. Have you heard of the Club Alamut? No. It sounds romantic, doesn't it? The kind of place where you get little umbrellas and whelks. Huh? That's romantic? Is this plaster any use to you? I'm allergic to plaster. I'd like to shake you by the hand. Don't be fresh, young man. Can you think of any use for this greasy tissue? I guess you could use it to baste a roast turkey. What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined? In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything, I mean everything, is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. 6.10, bowel movements, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. Oh, you mean she's been here a long time? No, I mean there's not a man in this clinic who hasn't sprawled out on her. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous, with a big green capital J. How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? Down the corridor on the left, turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Bare left past the administrator's sauna. And turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. It was a classic example of functionalism, like an early Soviet spacecraft. I almost expected to see a dog or a monkey leap out. There was no way I could improve on the sculpture with the janitor watching me. It was a life-sized marble figure of a guy in robes. The sculptor had tried to give him a look of paternal authority and concern. To my mind, he looked just plain constipated. Maybe the face of the unaccountably happy domestic had made me unduly suspicious. I mean, I knew it was only my imagination, but the water tasted, well, peculiar. 
I guess the water cooler was for the use of people lost in the corridors. He looked blissfully happy for no apparent reason. Hello. What's that? I said hello. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. You know what? If you start whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. It's a deal. Do you know a nurse called Grendel? Sure I do. Is she on duty today? Yeah. End of the corridor, Ward J2. Have you seen any unsavory characters lurking about in the corridors? No, sir. I haven't. But I've got nothing to worry about. What's that, Mr. Shiny? You'd take good care of the rascals, I'll bet you would. With a friend like him, I've no fear of oppressors. It must be a great comfort. He is. Would Mr. Shiny be your polishing machine by any chance? Please, don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years, and he's never let me down once. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. He's got a name, you know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shiny. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? No, I, uh... I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull-through. Whatever you've got with this metal mop foot is probably a fine and noble thing. It is? Say, it's not every day I meet someone as crazy as me. Do you know where I'd find a patient called Marquet? No, I'm not allowed on the wards with Mr. Shiny. Take a look at this red nose. Are you a policeman? No, this is a clown's nose, not a policeman's. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Who is it? That's what I'm asking you. Have you seen him before? How should I know? You haven't told me who he is. Take a look at the photo. Yeah, okay. Now, have you seen him before? No. What do you think of this, Sam? Oh, boy. What is it? A priceless gemstone found in a medieval castle in Ireland. Get me into Marquet's ward, and it's yours. I don't wear jewelry. If this gem was yours, you'd be able to buy a hundred Mr. Shinies. Don't be silly. There's only one Mr. Shiny. Do you recognize this pass? No, I don't. Should I? No, but I wondered if you'd seen a stranger flashing it about. No, sir. But if I had, Mr. Shiny would take care of him. Would this tool be any use to you? No, sir. Mr. Shiny has no user serviceable parts. Whatever that means. Do you recognize this matchbook? You should never, ever play with matches. I know that, but... People get hurt when they do. Sure. They end up in hospital, like the burger lady. She was so burned up, they didn't know whether to use bandages or onions. Do you recognize this powder? Is that dandruff? No way. It sure looks like dandruff. It's plaster. Ugh. Would you like to shake my hand? Not until I've washed, if you don't mind, sir. You can pick up all kinds of things in a hospital. Like nurses, right? No, sir. Bugs and germs. And fungal infections. What does this tissue suggest to you? You have a cold. What you need is vitamin C and a side order of machine oil. See you later. Yeah.
Take care now. Hey now, you can't go in there. How come? I'm responsible for the contents of that cupboard. The door didn't have a sign or label or any kind of identification. The connector in the socket supplied electricity to the polishing machine. As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? Dr. Stobart at your service. The guy seemed to be practicing his air of authority. Today, he was working on his withering stare. The young man's face was full of eagerness and enthusiasm. I figured he was fresh from college. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Aha, just the man. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bunny, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Do your own babysitting, Gramps. Who do you think you are, anyhow? I am Felix Hagenmeyer. And... May I say what an honor it is to meet you in person, sir. You are on my medical wall of fame. Right up there with Pasteur and Leary. I look on it as a privilege, no, an honor, to look after your nephew, sir. He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. Do you recognize this red nose, sir? No, I do not. This is a hospital, not a circus ring. We minister to the sick in body, not the sick in mind. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, sir, I do not. Look at this, Doc. It's a genuine medieval-type gemstone. Yes, so I see. Remarkable. Does the name Thomas Merlin mean anything to you? No, it does not. Does this tool mean anything to you? Sacre bleu! That's exactly what I needed in my last operation. It is? I had to improvise with a knitting needle and a couple of corks. If only you had been on hand at the time, my patient would have given his right arm for it. Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? No, sir, I have not. Does this white powder mean anything to you? No, sir, I do not pretend to know the pharmacist's job. May I have the honor of shaking you by the hand? 
You may not. I don't encourage physical contact between my staff. What do you make of this tissue, sir? Interessant. I thought I knew the ins and outs of the human body, but this has me beat. If I were you, I'd have this sample analyzed. So long, Hagenmeyer. Hey, Benoit! There's no need to shout. What do you want? Do you know anything about a patient named Marquet? Uh, no, sir, I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. Uh, I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. I didn't mean to get my hands dirty with the nurse. Shut up, Benoit. Okay, sir. Does this false nose mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Do we have to wear them while on duty? No, we don't. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. I've never seen him before. Does this gem mean anything to you? Not me, sir. Have you ever heard of a guy named Merlin? No, sir. What does this tool suggest to you? Isn't that used to snap the patient's ribs? When exploring the abdomen? I hope not. Have you ever heard of the club Alamut? No, sir. Do you know what this white powder is? No, sir. Shake my hand, Benoit. I don't think that's a good idea, sir. How come? Dermatitis. Well, I don't have dermatitis. I do. What does this tissue mean to you? Is that a nasal discharge, sir? No, it's grease paint. Follow me, Benoit. I'm right behind you, sir. Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, hi. Is this Ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, Doctor. Uh, thank you, nurse. Well, who's first? Monsieur Croquet in bed two. What's his problem? He's been complaining of loss of consciousness. You'll need this, Doctor. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Stobart. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. The nurse told me you keep losing consciousness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've had the problem as long as I can remember. It's a real out-of-body experience. <laughs> like death, but not so conclusive. I see. How long does it last? Just a fraction of a second, <laughs> and then I recover. I might not have been a doctor, but I was formulating a diagnosis all the same. This guy was nuts. I know exactly what you mean. It's known in the medical field as blinking. Is it serious? Of course it isn't serious. It's perfectly natural. B but just think, two seconds every minute? Why? <laughs> That's almost half an hour every day. Two weeks out of every year spent in total darkness. I don't have time to listen to this baloney. Which bed is Marquet in? <laughs> He's round the corner, in solitary. What's the matter with him? I don't know, but the men who brought him in were wearing masks and rubber gloves. Hey, you're a doctor. <laughs> How come you don't know? We doctors don't know everything. Then how come you act like you do? Has Marquet had any visitors? Nah, <laughs> neither have I. That's the worst thing about being in hospital. You feel like the rest of the world has abandoned you. Well, you know how it is. Life goes on. Thanks for those comforting words. Do you recognize this red nose? Nah, I don't. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Nah, Doctor. Who is it? 
A cold-blooded killer. One of your colleagues? <laughs> no. He really is a murderer. Oh, I've never seen him before. Does this gem mean anything to you? No, Doctor. Have you heard of a guy called Merlin? No, Doctor. Do you know what this tool is used for? Eye surgery. That's a dumb thing to say. It's not sharp enough. Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? Nah, I haven't. Do you know what this is? Is it self-raising flour? No. Do you know what this piece of equipment is called? No, I don't. I thought about giving him an electric shock, but I just couldn't do that to a sick guy. Have you any idea what this is? Please, take it away before I throw up. Well, goodbye and good luck. Thanks, Doc. The guy was sick. His face was the same shade of gray as the pillow beneath his head. I wondered whether I ought to call the nurse. Maybe check him out for breathing. Now, I was no doctor, but this guy looked dead to me. The nurse was stunningly beautiful. The guys on this ward sure were lucky to be in her care. This guy didn't look sick to me. He didn't have spots or stitches, and he certainly didn't have a fever. Doctor! What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Of course I am. No, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. Hello, anybody home? Who are you? My name is Dr. Stobart, and I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. Are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. What can you tell me about Marquet? He's the man in the private room, isn't he? That room was mine before I was tossed out like a common squatter. Do you know what's wrong with Marquet? They won't even say what's wrong with me. Tell me, doctor, what's your opinion? Uh... It's too early to say. But I've been here for three months. What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very efficient young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I've no complaints. The woman in reception described Nurse Grendel as a monster. Well, that's simply not true. She's quite strict, but that's her job isn't it? You've got to have discipline in a place like this. Do you recognize this red nose? Doesn't that belong to Boissy? No. I found it in a sewer. He's a clown, you know. You wouldn't think so to look at him now, would you? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, Doctor. Uh, who is it? A cold-blooded killer. Really? He's a dead ringer for my bank manager. Of course, Mr. Soames hasn't got a scar, and he doesn't come from the Middle East. His hair's a lot grayer, too. Otherwise, it's just like him. Remarkable. Does this gem mean anything to you? No, Doctor. Is this some kind of test? If it was, you would have failed. Have you heard of a guy called Merlin? No, Doctor. Do you know what this tool is used for? I'd rather not, Doctor. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. 
Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? I'm not really a nightclub man, Doctor. A game of whist and a glass of ginger wine is about my limit. Do you know what this is? It looks like plaster. How did you know that? I'm a plasterer. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. It's my job. I thought about giving him an electric shock, but I just couldn't do that to a sick guy. Have you any idea what this is? No, Doctor. I wouldn't even like to guess. See you later. Hey, Benoit! Yes, sir? Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. What do you want me to do with it? Well, keep it safe until I think of something. Pardon me, nurse. Oui, monsieur. Do you have any clowns on the ward? Why, yes, we do. A professional clown. I'll bet he lightens the place up. Hardly. Monsieur Boissy has been in a coma for the last three months. What's wrong with Boissy? He was involved in a very nasty accident. A silly stunt involving a unicycle. His current condition is due to post-traumatic shock. It's unlikely he'll ever perform as a clown again. It's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. Do you have a patient named Marquet on this ward? Oh, oui, monsieur. He is in the private room at the end of the ward. He has been placed in strict isolation. Why is Marquet in quarantine? If you wish to know more, you'll have to speak to Herr Hagenmeier. All I know is that Marquet's room is strictly out of bounds. Do you know who paid for Marquet's room? No, of course I don't. Preferential treatment like that must cost an arm and a leg. That's not my concern, monsieur. Do you recognize this red nose? Oh, dear. I don't think he'll be needing that again. Who? Monsieur Boissy, the comatose clown. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. Does this gem mean anything to you? It's beautiful, but I've never seen it before. Do you know Merlin of Gruber Electronics? No, I don't. Do you know Merlin of Gruber Electronics? No, I don't. Does this tool mean anything to you? I don't recognize it. Does this mean anything to you? The Club Alamut? I've never heard of it. Is this plaster any use to you? No, it isn't. Would you like to shake hands with me? Well... No, it's okay. Forget it. I didn't really want to use it on her anyway. Do you recognize this tissue? No, I don't. It looks like a chronic health risk to me. Well, I've been carrying it around for days, and I'm okay. My pocket's getting a little soggy. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. Hey, Benoit! Yes, sir? Are you ready with that pressure gauge? Primed and ready to pump, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Use it on Nurse Grendel. Huh? Go on, she'll enjoy it. Well, okay. Dr. Stobar? Yeah? I would appreciate it if you saved your jokes for the intern's rest room. This is a hospital ward, not a cabaret. Oh, uh, lighten up. I heard that. Any more nonsense and I shall report you to Dr. Hagenmeier. Hey, Benoit! Yes, sir? Do you still have that gauge? Ah, oh, yes. What do you want me to do with it? Use it on René Croquet. Okay. Hey, 
Hey, Benoit. Yes, sir. Do you still have? Oh, yeah. Use it on Eric Sopmarsh. Okay. It was a life-sized marble figure of a guy in robes. The sculptor had tried to give him a look of paternal authority and concern. To my mind, he looked just plain constipated. I'm Dr. Stobart. Bonjour, Doctor. Have you heard of a guy called Marquet? He's in quarantine, Doc, right behind this ear door. Marquet is just the man I wanted to see. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. He has anthrax. I have to visit my patient. What for? Routine. I have to check he's still breathing. What if he's not? I'll sign the certificate and register his bed is vacant. That's a cold and distant attitude to death. Well, I've been institutionalized to the point of godlike aloofness. The white coat suits you. Thanks. Have you seen any suspicious characters on the ward? Yeah, I have. A gorilla and a weasel? No. This was a tatty old bear. How's the bear acting suspiciously? Well, he was wearing a homburg. Is that against the law? No, but it's pretty weird for a bear. Don't you think it's possible that the bear was a man in disguise? Well, obviously, I'm not completely stupid. But who would go to the bother of disguising himself as a bear? It's not as if he'd blend in with the surroundings. I checked with Pace to see if any bears had been reported missing from the zoo or a traveling circus. They told me to sit tight until reinforcements arrive. I guess they're right. I'd be stupid to tackle a bear single-handed. Do you recognize this red nose? Don't get cute with me. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I have never seen him before. Do you recognize this gem? It isn't an emerald, is it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Thanks. Are you Thomas Merlin of Gruber Electronics? No. Then you won't be needing this. What do you think this tool is used for? Branding mice without bending down. Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? No. It sounds Middle Eastern. Can you think of any sensible use for this plaster? Sensible? No. Pural? Yes. But you've probably thought of those already. Would you like to shake hands? What for? As a gesture of goodwill. On reflection? No. What does this tissue suggest to you? It looks as if it has been used to wipe Satan's bottom. I hate to say it, but you could be right. Catch you later, officer. Au revoir, Doc. If you see that bear, kick him in the nuts. Rather you than me, pal. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lachmar gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh. I thought you were... One of the assassin. <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you will sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it 
Tosi, Grandmaster, Quickly, Tell him that I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. Well, you have it? Not yet, <laughs> but it's been taken care of. I hired a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You know them? We've met. What about the Hashashin? Uh, uh, he's more likely to have followed Klausner. He'll stop at nothing to prevent the reforging of the sword. And that's bad, is it? As for Klausner, uh, uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? He, he uh, has a theory about the location of the... <laughs> That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeier was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Well, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Dr. Braille working here. He's an imposter! The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashiashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me. That guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Mou? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. I'll let you work it out. 